to at least a few dozen meetings in your life that have dragged on forever. What if someone funny had been running them? When I was told I volunteered to do this, <laughs> uh, my first reaction was surprise, because for the life of me, I could not remember agreeing to come up here. I'm the only daughter in an Italian-American family. <laughs> <laughs> now, I will say that my father is of a modest stature. It's not only about comedy. What they've done there is created a culture, and that's one of the most important things. Their culture happens to be comedy. I actually do like to really sit back and relax. And so, no, I, I do. Some people think I look like Moby. <laughs> <laughs> so similar, like when Moby CDs come out, I get upgraded to first class. <laughs> I get into better restaurants. Breaks down those barriers, and success comes from being open and human. They think I'm working like somewhere between the mayor's office and like the fire department, just because they have no idea what I'm doing. Which I, I mean, whatever they, whatever job it is that I do that they've created in their mind, they're really proud of. So I just let them yeah, go. Whatever. My dad introduced me as one of New York's bravest. So I'm just like, yeah, that's. That's cool with me, whatever. Best comedy are true stories. Right. And the funniest things are things that happen to you while you're at business, while you're at work. And if you can tell people those stories, it's fantastic. We try to give Steve pet projects at Peppercom. We try to keep him out of the way. Mostly away from clients. Out of fear of losing them. You know, sometimes we'll send him on a rock climbing expedition up in Vermont. Other times we find a mountain halfway around the world in hopes that he'll go and, quite frankly, not come back.